It's spur jammed. Oh. And finally, cooling off down to 99. Whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Proverbs 1, 33. Divine love is rendered conspicuous when it shines in the midst of judgments. Fair is that lone star which smiles through the rifts of the thunderclouds. Bright is the oasis which blooms in the wilderness of sand. So fair and so bright is love in the midst of wrath. When the Israelites provoked the Most High by their continued idolatry, he punished them by withholding both dew and rain, so that their land was visited by a sore famine. But while he did this, he took care that his own chosen ones would be secure. If all other brooks are dry, yet there shall be one reserved for Elijah, and when that fails, God shall still preserve for him a place of sustenance. Nay, not only so, the Lord had not simply one Elijah, but he had a remnant according to the election of grace, who were hidden by fifties in a cave. And though the whole land was subject to famine, yet those fifties in the cave were fed, and fed from Ahab's table too by his faithful, God-fearing steward, Obadiah. Let us draw from this the inference that, come what may, God's people are safe. Let convulsions shake the solid earth, let the skies of cells be rent in twain. Yet amid the rack of worlds, the believer shall be as secure as in the calmest hour of rest. If God cannot save his people under heaven, he will save them in heaven. If the world becomes too hot to hold them, then heaven shall be the place of their reception and their safety. Be then confident when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, and don't fear. Let no agitation distress you, but be quiet from fear of evil. Whosoever cometh upon the earth, whosoever cometh upon the earth, you beneath the broad wings of Jehovah shall be secure. Oh, whatsoever cometh upon the earth, stay yourself upon his promise, rest in his faithfulness, and bid defiance to the blackest future, for there is nothing in it direful for you. Your sole concern should be to show forth to the world the blessedness of hearkening to the voice of wisdom. Man, ain't that the truth today? That's all I can say is just... I've been doing a lot of work on the internet writing and posting in some very precarious, challenging positions because people sometimes get wrapped up in their emotions and want to take out vengeance on others in a way that they feel is justified until they have an opportunity to think it through. And sometimes you have to take people step by step you know, a little bit at a time to have them to come to a conclusion that reminds them that if they are a Christian, that this world is not their home, but also that the circumstances are not developed for them to take sides on issues, but rather to point to Jesus in the midst of the issue. Because the reality is, is that only God knows what's really going on. We do not. We think we know. But there's so much more that's going on behind the scenes than we know that people want to create for themselves some kind of independence that gives them the opportunity to exercise their gift or their ability or what they think is right. And Sadly, God just wants us to just step back from the situation for a moment, evaluate it, and ask Him what's going on. For me, I've been blessed out of my mind today because I've had the opportunity to share just God's love in a unique and beautiful way. And for that, I'm thankful. And I hope that you see in your devotionals and time alone with God that if you stop, if you'll not react to the things that are around you, whether it be your wife, your job, your situation, your children, but if you could just step back from it for a moment, get alone, if it means in the bathroom, go to the bathroom. <laughs> and talk to God on it, you may find that the circumstances are a little different than you think. And then if you commit it to him, he may work behind the scenes to accomplish for you what you cannot do for yourself. He delights in being merciful. He is long-suffering in giving grace to the humble and the meek. And we are being 
gradually brought to learn how to be lowly, meek, and humble without being suffered, you know, suffering saints about it, but to be recognizing the trust that we have in God, that we can have with all of our hearts, with everything that we think of, with everything that we know, and that we would not try to think of our own way of working it out or our own understanding, but giving him acknowledgement in everything we do and say and be and letting him direct our path because in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, that's what it says. <laughs>